A big step forward this week in the Republican effort to roll back Obama-era Wall Street regulations, with the House Financial Services Committee voting Thursday to send the Financial Choice Act to the House floor. Democrats are promising a bitter fight against the bill, which would repeal major portions of the 2010 legislation known as Dodd-Frank. Texas Congressman Jeb Hanserling is the chair of the House Financial Services Committee and author of the new bill. Mr. Chairman, welcome. Thank you, Paul. Thanks for having me. So uh, uh, the president and Gary Cohn, one of his chief economic advisors, have floated the idea of breaking up the big banks by reinstating the uh, separation between investment and commercial banking that existed under Glass-Steagall. What do you think of that? Well, number one, as you probably know, many provisions of Glass-Steagall uh, still survive. Uh, number two, I'm not exactly certain what the uh, president has in mind here, but I think the goal is is to make sure that we have robust economic growth and we minimize uh, the ability to have the kind of financial panic we had in 2008. What I would argue to our president and Mr. Cohn is in the Financial Choice Act, which both of them have uh, at least given some laudatory comments to, and we help achieve that goal. But at the end of the day, I don't think this is about downsizing banks or supersizing banks. It's about right-sizing them uh, with market discipline uh, as opposed to regulatory fiat, which has uh, hurt us so badly leading into the 2008 panic when we had federal policy that essentially incented financial institutions to put people uh, into homes they couldn't uh, ultimately afford to keep. But you would not, so you would not agree with the idea that some have offered, including a lot of Democrats, the, the, the uh, uh, repeal of Glass-Steagall, uh, or much of it, uh, uh, played a role in the financial crisis of 2008. No, oh, not, in, not in the least. I don't, I don't see any intellectual case that can be made for the fact uh, that those provisions of Graham Leach Bliley uh, that impacted Glass-Steagall played any role whatsoever. Okay. I mean, this was a total meltdown uh, of our uh, real estate uh, lending uh, market, basically brought upon by the affordable housing goals of Fannie and Freddie, which frankly is the next big project we have to take on, Paul, in the House Financial Services Committee. Okay. Now, you're, you say with your Financial Choice Act, you're going to uh, eliminate too big to fail uh, banks, that policy. I, I thought Dodd-Frank took care of that in 2010. <laughs> uh, you're saying it didn't, and how would yours, your bill do it differently? Well, I think what's kind of interesting, Paul, is, 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 is since Dodd-Frank was enacted, the big banks are bigger and the small banks are fewer and economic growth still lags. So, no, it didn't take care of too big to fail. Instead, this is the huge difference between the two parties and the two pieces of legislation. Under Dodd-Frank, they actually codified too big to fail into law. Uh, the federal government, as you well know, has the ability to designate too big to fail firms right. known as SIFI, systemically important financial institutions and then back that up with a taxpayer bailout system. Under the Financial Choice Act, we replaced taxpayer bailout with a new subchapter of the bankruptcy code for large, complex uh, financial institutions, and we prohibit any ability for the taxpayer to, uh, to bail out these funds. And so we're counting upon market discipline and, frankly, uh, high levels of private capital to replace uh, involuntary high levels of taxpayer capital. The okay. amount of capital that's required under the Financial Choice Act, loss-absorbing private capital, far greater than Dodd-Frank, far greater than the Basel Accords. All right, and, uh, and, that, and that capital, I think, is something that a lot of people across the uh, uh, spectrum could, could, could agree with. But here's something, you know, there's something called the Orderly Liquidation Authority under Dodd-Frank, and you would eliminate that in place it with that bankruptcy provision. Ben Bernanke, as you know, the former chair of the Federal Reserve, said this would be an irresponsible provision because it wouldn't, the bankruptcy point would not allow the federal government to act with enough uh, rapidity to be able to stop a real meltdown if you had a bank, uh, a big bank fail and threaten the whole financial system. What's your response to Bernanke? Well, number one, he ought to listen to his predecessor, Alan Greenspan, who I think has the complete opposite uh, opinion. Uh, Chairman Greenspan, as does former Federal Reserve Governor uh, Robert Heller, believe that what we need to do is, again, replace private capital with these bailout mechanisms. The second point I'd make, Paul, is that an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. If we use market discipline, market discipline, which I would define as having both the appearance and reality of having your own money at risk, 
will ensure that we right size our financial institutions, that we right size the amount of risk, and that also, Paul, that we don't impose one global view of risk on the economy, which is what happened uh, in 2008 when our regulators said that for all intents and purposes, you don't have to reserve capital against mortgage backed securities and sovereign right. debt, think Greek bonds, Fannie and Freddie, and the rest. Uh, is history. So we want to try to prevent these meltdowns in the first place. You do that through market discipline. All right. Very quickly, uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, should the president fire Richard Cordray, head of the Consumer uh, Financial Protection Bureau? Uh, the short answer is yes. I wish he would have done it yesterday, but I'll settle for today or tomorrow. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much for being here.